Brilliant. Well, uh, good morning and welcome to the King Centre and online there. Uh, welcome to what we call a regional celebration. This is a joint uh, service of Oxford Community Church and Lifehouse Community Church, Bicester and Banbury. Whee! Got more of a cheer from Bicester and Banbury, so it's a good thing. Excellent. That's because Bister and Banbury are here and Oxford are still in bed. Uh, <laughs> apart from those gallant ones who are here. They'll trickle in later. Um, I'm Ruth and I'm married to him, so I can stand close to him. Um, and uh, I just want to extend a warm welcome to all of you who are either watching or in the room. Um, we are very pleased to have you with us. Uh, we really value being able to connect with people. We... It's, it makes me sad to see that maybe you know some people might come in and sit on a chair and be with us and then not 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 talk to us and not be able to talk to us. So please do uh, connect with us in one of the many ways that you can. You can fill out um, a card at the welcome desk and tick yes, someone can be in touch with me, and then we can um, we can email you during the week or give you send you a text or something to connect you in with the, the family because. What we are on a Sunday morning is just one part of being yeah. the body of Christ, and we really want people to be fully part of the body. Um, and there's also an email that you can use, um, which is pastors at OCC. Here it is. Look at that wonderful tech team putting that up for us. Do email us on that if you would like to have any further chats. And, and we can actually have an in real life conversation outside afterwards. We can. Outside, you can gather in groups of six yeah. um, and Brilliant. have a chat. And and who's that down there? This chap here. Who's that? This handsome ah. fellow is Mark Ely. Mark, do the rest of your introduction. Thank you. Who are you? Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Mark. I'm not married to them. Thank there you, you go. Uh, I am married to Catherine. Um, I'm the pastor of Lifehouse Community Church. Oh. Look at that. Uh, it is so good to be together, um, to join together Lifehouse and Oxford and spend time this morning together we're really looking forward to it. There's something of God uh, rejoining us and reconnecting uh, a life joint that has been formed for many years, but a new day of what God wants to do today. So we're really excited about what God wants to do. Brilliant. Um, uh, we, in a moment, we're going to worship. I'm delighted. We have a stage full. Of, I'm always excited when we have a stage full of worship leaders. It's, it's give, I'm looking forward to worship. So we have Elizabeth is actually the worship leader in charge today, but we have lots of other worship leaders as well, so that's, that's a great thing. So Elizabeth and the team are going to lead us in worship in just a moment. Uh, for those of you online, you get to sing to your heart's consent. For those of us in the room, we're still not allowed to sing, I'm afraid, and you need to keep your masks on. Um, as we gather, this has become standard practice for both Lifehouse and Oxen, as we gather, if God speaks prophetically or you have scriptures to share, do WhatsApp, either Mark or myself, you'll have one of our WhatsApps, I'm sure, and we'll work out how we can weave that into what we're doing this morning. Uh, shortly after 11, we're going we're gonna to worship and then we're going to just thank, thank a few people. And then after that, there'll be children's and youth activities for noughts to 18s in three different groups sort of out there. Uh, life has people, follow the crowd, and someone, Ruth, will probably go and say, Ruth, you're on youth, aren't you, this morning? No? That was last week. Joe, I'm getting confused. Where's Joe? Joe, some of you, most of you from Life has, and I think, no, Joe, and um, who's on children's, work, children's activities? No, they're not in here. Brilliant. Excellent. And then Steve is going to be speaking to us uh, at some point, and we're going to pray for what God's doing with between Oxford and Lifehouse just a little bit later as well. So, excellent. We're expecting to conclude shortly after midday. Elizabeth. Actually, no, Mark, you've got something. Yeah. So, it's good. Having three people on stage is just a bit more complicated than usually you can get. It's good. Uh, we are going to worship, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, shall we stand if we're able? Um, I, I had this word, um, Hosanna, um, and um, if we were able, I would be getting us to shout it out. Um, but it says, uh, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And... Um, uh, the people there were expecting uh, of, of something to happen. Um, they had heard stories of their forefathers and mothers of how God had showed up and had saved them, had rescued them. And here they are shouting Hosanna again. And I feel this morning there's a call on us to shout Hosanna, 
to raise our voices, to be expectant that we're worshipping a God that saves, a God that saved each one of us, and a God who moves mountains and saves us from situations. There's an expectation that God wants to bring to us today. So let's open our hearts and shout Hosanna to him as we worship. Amen. And there's nothing else to say. Let's just worship. He's a faithful God forever. You are with us, Lord. Forever you are faithful. Forever you are good. Yes. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love and tears forever. For he is good. He's above all things. His love. mighty hand and now stretched out his love and tears forever for the life that's been reborn his love and tears forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise His love endures forever And by the grace of God we carry on His love endures forever Is 
Just forever. He says he will be with us and he will never forsake us. There's a song that we want to sing and some of the words of that song say that you hold me even through the fire and even in the darkest night you are close like no other. So that tells us that there's some times that when we walk through the fire but we walk through and we come out on the other side. We always win. We are on the winning side. Victory is ours. He has made us victorious. He has made us more than conquerors. You are good, and your mercy endures forever. I love you, Lord.
Talking, they've been singing about the goodness of God. Let's just take a moment and put the put words on our own lips. We can't sing, but we can put words on our lips and thank God for His goodness in our lives. We've all got something to thank God for. Maybe it's health, maybe it's healing, maybe it's a family member situation, maybe it's some financial provision, maybe it's things not working out quite as bad as you thought. I don't know. Uh, just take a moment, thank God for the, His goodness in our lives.
wants to give strength to his people today. Oh, he wants to remind you, remind us that he's our strength. He's our strength. He's our strength. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our strength. Being our strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Whisper it to yourself. Strength like no other. Reach to me. Lord, worthy are you, Lord God. Just, just keep receiving where you are right now. We say amen to those words. Amen to those words. You are our hope. You are our rock. You are our deliverer. Just receive God's grace for you right now. More, Lord. Thank you that you are a gracious God. You're a gracious God for each and every one of us. And we pray would we receive that in abundance right now. Would we receive your mercy and your grace that you would lift us up, that you would pick us up out of the pit, out of the clay, out of the muck, and that you would wash us clean right now. Come and pour out your Holy Spirit right on us right now. Fill us afresh, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, do take your seats. Uh, as we've been uh, worshipping, the Lord has been speaking to some prophetically gifted people. Uh, it's wonderful when he does that because it gives us perspective. And these are, we're just going to ask, I'm going to ask Re first, Re Massey, and then um, Adam, and then Steve Bigu. If you could just queue up for this podium mic over here and share 
what God has given you, that would be fantastic. These are words to posture us, church, to help us as individuals think about our perspective in this season. So, uh, Reed, do you want to come to the mic first? Hi, good morning, church. Uh, uh, this morning as I was praying, and God is stirring in my heart, and he spoke to me through Isaiah 43, 19, and uh, it goes, uh, see, I am doing new thing. Now it is spring up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland. And I prayed over it and God is speak to me to share this with the church. And he said, there are people here who's thinking like they are in the desert land, but uh, God is calling you to shift your focus on him and he's saying, as you lift your eyes up to me, I am making a new way for you in the wilderness and the spring of water will overflow. And just look at me and I will lead you step by step and do not lose your focus from me because I am your strength. And God is doing new thing for you and for the church. Amen. The, uh, so what I shared with uh, Andy earlier was, uh, let me recall, um, I was uh, impressed by that, that idea that we are a holy nation and a royal priesthood, and that uh, as God reveals himself to us as he does every day by his grace as he's been doing this morning, uh, that yes, it is for our transformation, but it's for our transformation to be a people who are mediators, who are intercessors with the world, uh, that we are a people who are called to share God's goodness with the world, and that as we were, as we were seeing that beautiful, uh, particularly the bridge of that song just grips me, that God's goodness mm. is running after us. It's running after us. It's not, it's not like sort of some lackadaisical, like, oh, all right, Adam, just you wander off in your sinfulness or your weakness or your despair, and I'll just leave you to it. God pursues us. He pursues us with his goodness. He pursues us. And, but it's not just that we would know that. It's that the world could know, the world that is in the midst of this pandemic and is desperate, desperate for a, a savior, desperate for a God who can come and take them from the piles of rubbish that they're in. I don't know, just read the news. The piles of rubbish they're in, and a God who, despite all appearances sometimes, is pursuing them with, their good, with his goodness. That is, that's the gospel that we have to share. Yeah. Yeah. That is the gospel that you have to share with your friends. It's the gospel that we can pray into being on our knees, that the goodness of God would pursue, the what is pursuing the world, each person you know, each person you read about, despite their circumstances, that the goodness of God is pursuing them. Yeah, great. And there's the gospel right there, right there. Desperate for the hope that there's a God who's pursuing you, I am. I felt God remind me this morning of this. I felt you wanted to say this. I'm coming back. I'm coming home. I'm coming back. I'm coming home. Have hope. Have hope that I am coming back. That I I'm coming home. Faith is being sure. Being sure of what we hope for. And certain of what we do not see. I am coming back with all my goodness. With all my goodness to heal. With all my goodness to restore. With all my goodness to reconcile. With all my goodness to bring resolution 
with all my goodness to bring justice. You've seen and have seen signs of my healing, haven't you? You've seen signs of my reconciliation, haven't you? You've seen signs of these things. But I am coming back. I am coming home to bring it in its fullness, says the Lord. This is not a vain hope for a temporary victory. This is a sure hope of my coming back, my victorious, pursuing goodness, coming back. I'm coming home. Let's just take a moment and reflect on what's been shared. Re spoke of a focus shift, letting God bring his assurance to us. Adam spoke of a focus on the goodness of God running after, not just us, but the world. And Steve spoke of a hope. What's the focus shift for you this morning? Which of those words is God, does God want to put as a seed in your heart to change your perspective? Lord, we open our hearts, Lord, we're your people, we're your servants, we're your followers, and we, Lord, we want to be caught up in your heart, your Father's heart for the world that Adam just so powerfully shared with us, Lord, and we, we pray you would change our hearts, even this morning, Lord, where our hearts need a little shift, a little adjustment, you bring that focus shift this morning in our hearts, Lord, amen. Brilliant. Uh, we're going to come back to some of that, um, what, some of what God wants to do with us this morning when Steve comes to speak in a few minutes. Uh, right now, we've just got a couple of uh, thank yous to do. Uh, and uh, so, Ruth, you're going to come and join me? One of the features of a lot of the New Testament letters is that they end with a whole list of people that um, we often find a little bit boring, perhaps, but, but they're, they're there in the Bible 2,000 years later. God wants to honor people. And we want to honour some people now, thank some people for their, their function, their work amongst us uh, in this last season. So Ruth, over to you. Thank you. So it's my great delight to thank our wonderful Joe Mayo. Joe, if you could join me on the stage with that mic. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> did, did you know this was happening? No, she didn't. No, we um, she works. She works well by the seat of her pants, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> jo has uh, is just coming into land, having done her her apprentice this year with OCC. She has given her time. Jo, take the mic over there. What um, what have you been involved in? Um, what have I been involved? So I've uh, helped Ruth run the youth work. I've uh, done a day a week at the King's School, helping teach there. What else have I done? I've done some like student work. student work. I've helped with student work and some like training up in preaching and speaking and that kind of teaching capacity. Yeah. yeah. So who's enjoyed hearing from Joe this year? Who's actually enjoyed that? Yes. We have we have seen Joe grow immensely in um, the way that she. Uh, speaks to us from the word she's grown in her love for the word and her handling of the word it's been a delight to see that um and uh, young people i just want to say you've done a good job while she's been involved with you because now she decided she's going to go and be a teacher she decided she loves young people so you've done a good job oxford youth well done <laughs> so joe um i got a little gift for you yours is the small one <laughs> um yes um, well, yes, and I want to personally say thank you. Thank you for all your support. She's great to work alongside. If ever you get the privilege of being on a team with Jo, it's great. I see lots of nodding heads out there. And, am I praying for her? I'm praying for her. That's great. <laughs> um, Father God, I want to thank you for Jo. I want to thank you for um, just her sense of fun, Lord, and for her gentle heart, Lord God, that is open to you and has received you this year in many new ways, and that, Lord, where she stepped out into new things and seen you faithful. Lord, I want to pray that as she steps out into teacher training, that, Lord, she would prove you to be her faithful, true, and loving God in all of the challenges that she meets. And we just want to pray for your blessing on her as she goes forwards. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 
Uh, one of our, our normal habit at these moments might be to uh, our normal habit at these moments might be to gather around and sort of pray further. Um, feel free to do that outside afterwards. And if, if some of you who've got a prophetic gift uh, feel the Lord speaks for any of these people, we're going to thank. Then do please share that with them. In, in these days, it's a little bit more constrained, but actually we can still hear God for Joe. She moves into this next season. Brilliant, Mark. You're going to do something now, I think. Uh, great. I want to add some of my thank yous as well. Um, in this season of, the, of COVID and coming back into some normality and meeting, we've uh, been hugely blessed uh, by Oxford Community Church in helping us in all sorts of ways. Yeah, give them a round of applause. Yeah. Um, we uh, really appreciate it. And I just want to add a few other thank yous. Let's clap at the end because we might be here for a long time. Um, uh, for worship, for Chris, Jenna, Dan, Elizabeth, Emmanuel, Josh, Rich, Noah, Jane, uh, Beth and Mike. And especially to Beth. Beth has been a tremendous help in just sorting things out and getting things going and have just given themselves to helping us and it's been fantastic. Uh, to people in the tech world, as I call it, um, I don't know what I'm doing, so it's good. Um, Andrew Clark, um, Tony, Nick, uh, you've just been fabulous at setting up stuff and making things happen that it's just there and it's brilliant. Um, for those that have come to preach, Lois, the McNichols, uh, Carol, uh, Joe, Steve, Andy, um, Simon Jackman for coming and prophesying. Um, thank you so much. Um, let's give him a round of applause. Brilliant. Uh, we've got a couple more things to do. Um, one of the things we've been doing for the last two years is a thing called Upper Room. I don't know who's heard of Upper Room. Raise your hand. That's about six of you. Um, uh, it's great. Upper Room is a theological leadership development program, and we have some people who've just graduated. Here we are. There's a slide on the screen about to appear. Ta-da. Uh, there we are. Five people who have finished Upper Room this year. Fantastic. They all begin with Woo! J, if you notice. Woo! Yeah, most of them begin with J, so if your name begins with J, you might want to think about doing Upper Room next time. Um, we're going to start again in a year's time, but I wanted just to honour them. They have uh, endured working through this course in a pandemic. It's been mostly online. They have kept at it. They've done a fantastic job, each of them. They've each grown and developed and grown in, the, in, in a confidence in God's word. And, uh, you know, to, to talk to one of them. There's people there in both of our churches. Talk to one of them and find out what, what it is that that was about. Um, and if you want to find out more, look at our website. If you look at our website, there's a training page, and there's a little bit, there's a link there to Upper Room. And some of you might be interested in doing that in 22, not 2022 to 24, which is the next time we're going to run that. Um, if you want to do it uh, in a couple of years' time, you might want to think about doing Step First, which is a neat segue to Mark. Ah, good segue. Uh, and a slide's going to come up as well. Um, step is starting this November and um, goes through till March. Uh, three Saturday mornings, three Sunday evenings. We look at uh, how to lead in the church, how to lead in the workplace. Uh, we look at how to share life, how to see people grow, how leaders lead others. Um, we look at how we lead with the Holy Spirit. We look at a whole load of different leadership aspects. I want to encourage you to think about, is that something you could do and get on board with? We've had many people do it over the years. We've been running it for a number of years now, and it's been fantastic just to see people uh, gain something new or to springboard them into where they are in their leadership. So um, do check out the website or ask myself or Andy a bit more about that. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, this is your cue, Alison and Joe. Go. <laughs> um, I, children, thank you so much. I know it's been long and you may have been a little bit bored, but I think you've done a fantastic job at waiting um, and your team is going out at the moment and I'm going to pray for you children and young people before you go. Father God we thank you for each one of our young people, we thank you for the joy that is in them, we thank you for 
just the potential that you have placed in each one, that you pursue each one of them. And I pray this morning that as they um, enjoy their groups, that, uh, Lord, they would know that you are pursuing them with that everlasting love that will never let them down. Pray for your blessing on those that are working and those that are receiving. Amen. So, 4s to 11s, you're in the Vale room. Uh, youth, you are in the Chowa room. And Tiny Tots, you're upstairs as normal. Do feel free to go to your groups now. There's, there's still more to do this morning. Uh, God still wants to speak to us. Amen? Amen. Has he been speaking to you so far? Yeah. Okay, some of you. Good. Uh, let's open our hearts to what else he's got to say to us uh, in a moment. Um, Steve's going to come and join me. And uh, we would normally take an offering um, at a celebration when we gather together. Uh, we're not going to take an offering today. Um, Lifehouse are currently in a gift season already. Um, we're grateful for all that we've seen come in. Um, please do pray and think about what is it that God's asking you to give in that season. And then Oxford are going to enter into a gift season, um, I think, in the autumn. And so uh, start praying for that. Start praying. What's God asking you to give into that gift season as we uh, believe God's asking us to do more as a region as we move forward in those ways. So do pray. Let's be a generous people uh, with all that God's given to us. Steve, come in. Join us. You've got a microphone. Great. I do. Oh, look at that. Uh, good. Um, Steve, um, pizza or pasta? <sighs> pizza. Pizza. Okay, good. Uh, football or rugby? Uh, normally rugby, not at the moment. <laughs> Let's try this one. Uh, England or Italy? <laughs> uh, England. Oh, okay, he has family that live in other countries, so that could have been a little bit tricky, couldn't it? Maybe. <laughs> um, we all know Steve. Um, Steve uh, is a great blessing to us. And um, let me just pray as he brings God's word to us. Lord, we thank you for Steve. We uh, thank you for what you've put in his heart. We thank you that he's a man of God that seeks after you and seeks after you for each and every one of us too. And I pray you would fill him afresh with your Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would open our hearts and minds to hear from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mark. Wow. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is our first joint meeting as Lifehouse Community Church and Oxford Community Church since January 2020. And what an 18 months it has been. Uh, you know, way back before that, even that meeting, back in December 2019, uh, there were three spiritual fathers of... Um, decades of leadership in our network of churches uh, who each sensed God drawing them to the text of Isaiah 43 and to the particular verses that Re has read for us this morning. Ha! This is what I was going to speak from <laughs> this morning. Uh, this is a portion of scripture that was originally intended for Hebrews living through an incredibly hard season of exile in Babylon, in which 
in which season they had come to doubt God's care for them. And they couldn't see a better future. And then Isaiah 43. I'm going to read actually from verse 16. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and then they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. It's an interesting few verses here because we have a reminder about excellent former things and then a call not to dwell on the past. Verses 16 and 17 were a reminder for Hebrews in captivity in Babylon that God had once freed their ancestors from captivity in Egypt, part of the Red Sea, destroyed the captors. What a great reminder. And then verse 18 says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. So we have this reminder of excellent former things and a call not to dwell on the past. And what this teaches us is that when we remember what God has done in the past, it's not about the nostalgia of old stories, a bit closer to home and nearer in history. Oh, oh, wasn't it good back in John Wesley's day? Or for those who remember it, ah, oh, the 1990s. Wasn't the Toronto blessing wonderful? Not remaining there, but allowing stories of God's former deeds to remind us who God is, and therefore to expect Him to act in our day now. God says, Yes, I brought the people out of Egypt. I did that because I am the creator God who invents ways to save people. That's who I am. And so, of course, I'm going to do something new in your time too. God keeps bringing new things into the world. And just as no newborn baby is a replica of any baby born before, each life is unique, so God's actions are never a repeat performance. They're always genuinely, amazingly new. The Hebrews in Babylon had lived through hard times, and they had become glum and weak and fearful, and God sent them this word, see, I'm doing a new thing. See, as a result of all of that, I, I confess, I get frustrated when Christians are gloomy about the future, saying, that things are going to get worse. See, it sounds a lot like the Hebrews in Babylon saying, the Babylonians, oh, they'll never let us go. We're going to die here. Our future's over. God says, don't you remember what I'm like? Don't you remember who I am? I am the creator. And I'm busy making new things. See, the world's future 
is being constantly forged in the creative studios of heaven where God makes new things. I uh, grew up during the latter part of the Cold War. I grew up in Cheltenham which uh, has the advantage or disadvantage in in this regard of being close to GCHQ, the government's spy base. Growing up in the latter end of the Cold War, there was an ongoing anxiety about nuclear war. Do some of you remember that? Well, growing up in Cheltenham, we were told that because the Russians would want GCHQ intact, they'd never land a nuclear warhead on us only near enough to kill us from the radiation. (laughs) That's how I grew up. And it seemed like the Cold War would go on forever, right? Then, in the early 1980s, just one of a number of things that happened, a man called Christian Führer in Leipzig called people to pray every Monday, and about 12 people gathered and prayed every Monday, and as the atmosphere in East Germany continued to become more and more tense, and there was concern of a kind of civil war even breaking out, prayer increased. And by 1989, what had begun with 12 people praying Monday by Monday gathered 80,000 people in the center of Leipzig to pray for for God to do something, for God to intervene. And they lit candles, and they couldn't fit in any building, and they spread along the streets of the city center and then stood up with their candles And in an atmosphere of prayer, began to march through the city past the secret police headquarters. Four weeks later, the Berlin Wall fell. And everything was changed. A Communist Party official from Leipzig later said, we were were prepared for every eventuality, but not for candles and not for prayers. God does a new thing. People used to say that Britain was going to become more and more secular until the church was dead. Ha! And then God caused churches to explode with growth across the global south and sent millions of his children here as Bible-believing, spirit-filled ambassadors of his kingdom. New churches planted, new levels of prayer followed, and a new recognition that faith is more than just a European cultural heritage. It's our global hope. Today, As we consider the climate crisis or the massive backlog in untreated illness due to COVID, why do we assume the worst when God Almighty delights in inventing ways to save people? Now, look, I'm not minimizing those challenges. We are in some serious trouble. And we will remain deeply in trouble, barring some huge interventions. But I want you to know that God does intervene. He does step in. And he does new things. And I want you to know that God has been energetically at work throughout 2020 and 2021. And what I'd like to do with the rest of this message this morning is just try to describe to you some of the good things that we can see happening right now 
Things for which we can thank God because he is the giver, indeed the maker, of all good things. He has been energetically at work. If I could, Dan, have that slide. I have a picture that I hope will convey this. God is making holes in long-standing barriers. This is what I want to help us all to see this morning. God has been busily at work making holes in long-standing barriers. Thanks for the picture. You can bring it back up in the, now and again whenever you think it would be helpful. Uh, truth be told, we all like a good barrier. As long as, as long as it's in what we consider to be the right place. Uh, walls make us feel secure. They also clarify uh, what and who belongs where, and who is in charge in each place. Hence the phrase, good fences make good neighbors. You know what you're responsible for, where you are, where other people are, and things are in their boxes. And whew, we all like a good barrier in the right place. But barriers, as you know, also can prevent people from connecting with each other. And God desires his church to be united and to draw together people from every tribe on earth. Reading from Ephesians 2 and some parts from verse 13 onwards. In Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one. And Paul's writing here about the group of the Jews and the group of everyone else. He's made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity. He came and he preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. And consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling which God lives in by his spirit. Ha. Huh. God is energetically at work, and he's still seeing through to completion this project that Jesus decisively began to defeat the walls that divide people. Actually, uh, we've known for a long time that this is God's heart to dismantle barriers. But if we're honest... Uh, we've often resisted the dismantling of barriers. We find the removing of walls to be disorientating and stressful. And God has been at work through this pandemic when all of the boundaries seem to be all over the place. Can I hug you? Do you can, I, can, I, can I take my mask off here? Can I be there? Can we travel? Can, what? When so many boundaries have been in question, God has been at work and has been enjoying making holes in some long-standing barriers. And I want to describe to you four different <laughs> barriers that I see God has been attending to. The first one is the barrier to entering church. A barrier to entering church. God is using combination of the pandemic and the internet to punch a hole in the barriers to entering church life. And I have in mind here especially the, the, the hurdle of plucking up the courage to attend your very first church meeting. For some of you, for some of us, that was quite a while ago. 
Uh, we might not even remember. It might have been when we were children. But if you imagine turning up to your local, oh, I don't know, atheists club for the first time, or um, your local gurdwara for the first time, and wondering, oh, what will it be like? There's enough of a hurdle there for people considering coming to church that they never come. Before the first lockdown, 2020, online alpha was not a thing. By the start of June 2020, just 10 weeks after the first lockdown began, there were 1,500 alpha courses running online, and the number of guests on them was seen to have tripled. And there's a growing number of stories of people who've, who've plucked up the courage to attend a church meeting after having watched online. Those of us who remember life before the internet, uh, or maybe just those of us who place a high value on the, the, the chemistry and the connection that happens when we can meet physically, uh, we, we might be a little bit skeptical about the significance of all of this digital stuff. Uh, early in the first lockdown, I spoke to someone uh, who has a friend that runs a Christian dating agency. And he told me that now over half of all marriages uh, follow on from relationships that first began online. So meaningful relationships <laughs> emerge following these digital connections. And God has been using the pandemic and the internet to punch a hole in these barriers to entering church life. If you're watching this online now, come and join us. You can see just how whatever mixture of normality and weirdness we convey, uh, the rest of the room here are all much more normal than me. And we'd love to welcome you. If you've been watching the whole service, you'll see that we... Uh, Ruth said, we love to get to know people. That is true, and we'd love to get to know you. God is using the pandemic and the internet to punch a hole in that hurdle to coming into church life. And it's good news. God is at work energetically breaking barriers. That's number one, breaking the barrier for entry into church life. Here's another one. God is breaking the barrier between private worship and public life. Between private worship and public life. See, where churches are, and many, many are across the country, uh, where churches are live streaming their meetings, it has effectively opened up a public window into our church community life. Everything that I'm saying and doing right now is immediately visible to my neighbors, to the police, to friends and enemies of the gospel. In short, uh, it's in the public gaze. And it matters because one of the biggest handicaps that we Christians face in the world is that we often don't know how our Christian faith, especially as practiced in groups on Sundays, we don't know how that Christian faith relates meaningfully to all of the people that we meet through the week with whom we have very different kinds of conversations. And as many churches will continue, are intending to continue putting their meetings online, what I see is that God has placed an engine in the midst of the church which is going to keep us thinking again and again and again and again about how the private and the public can connect. And out of that, God's going to help us overcome that handicap of disconnection between the private and the public. And by the way, this isn't all just about the people that are at the front. I don't know whether you saw those wide-angle camera shots earlier, but you were in them. There's a few chairs that aren't, for practical reasons. There's some notices by the door over there, if you're here in the building, explaining that you'll be on the internet. 
uh, and where you might sit and what you, how do you feel about that and what do you do about it. Um, the cameras will capture you unless you work hard to ignore it. God is breaking down the barrier between the private and the public, and it's for our good, and it's for the good of his kingdom. It's good news. Thirdly, God has been at work breaking down the barrier between ethnic groups. This is what was spoken about so clearly in Ephesians chapter 2. Jesus came most especially to destroy the divisions between ethnic groups. But those walls have not yet all been torn down. On the 25th of May, 2020, George Floyd was killed by a police officer. And footage raced around the world of his tragic last moments in which he kept saying, I can't breathe. And somehow, through that, a great many white people began to listen like never before to the myriad experiences of racism happening all around them. Now, people who have experienced racism have often been hesitant to talk about it, not just because of the fear of being ignored, not just because you know, like, he wants to come across as moaning, um, but also because sometimes those experiences in themselves were, were rather confusing and the feelings hard to explain. Uh, and of course, often signals were given that those stories were not welcome. But something changed in 2020. And many of us realized for the first time how much those stories need to be heard in order that we can all understand more and we can be helped to change as we should. Now, in the last few months, lockdown has left us all a bit disconnected from each other. We've kind of been treading water in many ways, socially waiting for things to change again. But we are now going to be emerging from this lockdown in this summer. There's going to be more opportunity afresh for social interaction. I want to say, please, please, keep sharing about your experiences of racism in the, in the UK, especially in Oxford, even more so. And if in church life, please, even more so, we need to hear, we need to listen. And let's keep listening that we might learn and that we might change. And in all of that, God is at work. He's punching holes in long-standing barriers. And in this, enabling people to connect. There's a barrier that God is attending to uh, that gets in the way of people entering church life. <laughs> There's a barrier between the private and the public. God's been dealing with that too. And I think he has a special joy in dealing with the barrier between people of different cultures and ethnicities. Thank you, Lord. And then fourthly, in this pandemic, God has been addressing the barriers of geography. Uh, certainly, I know from from here at the King Centre, the messages that have gone out on the internet are regularly being watched by people uh, in Cheltenham as the church is being planted there and people are tuning in for encouragement along the way. Uh, in Wales, we're speaking to friends in Wales, hi Crispin and Chloe, just last week, finding encouragement. And we know the people that we've been supporting in Africa, in some very hard uh, sort of Islamic uh, settings there, uh, finding encouragement also. Uh, God has broken down. We, and uh, this has been amazing. I really loved this. Uh, children 
whose parents have taken them to far-flung parts of the world for the sake of the kingdom of God, um, but who found themselves then really quite isolated socially, been able to join in with youth clubs online during the pandemic. And I love that, and the life and the joy and the strength and the hope that it's brought. God has been dealing with barriers of geography through this pandemic and the changes that it's forced us to bring about. And then, something special has been happening for us as well, more locally around geography. See, for some years, Lifehouse Community Church, Oxford Community Church have been connected, even though we say the word um, Cherwell differently. We're in the Cherwell Valley comes down through North Oxfordshire, and then the Chirwell becomes part of the Thames in Oxford. And for some reason, we can't say it properly here. We call it the Charwell once it gets to Oxford. It's odd, because it's got an E in it. It's pretty clear. <laughs> but the river connects us, and our history has connected us. And we've been connected very much as wider family. Um, ha! But not so connected that people would think to move from one place to the other. Seems to me we, we've been a bit like that kind of wider family that you're happy to see at weddings from time to time, but could never imagine living with. <laughs> and then, in the spring of 2021, God began to do something quite remarkable. Through a series of conversations, uh, some people in Lifehouse came to ask for a closer relationship with Oxford, and a clutch of people in Oxford Community Church have heard a clear sovereign call to move to the Cherwell Valley and to join Lifehouse. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to hear a bit more about that, and, and we're going to pray into that. But I want to say, this is God energetically at work. This is God energetically at work. When we are weak and glum, <laughs> tired, he is none of those things. He's strong and he's happy <laughs> and, he's, and he's up and at it energetically and we see it in this. So I've wanted to draw your attention to what I see and I hope you too can see as some of what got some of the new things that God is doing right now punching holes in long-standing barriers for his glory. And in just a moment, we're going to pray for the relationship between uh, the Cherwell Valley and, and the city. But before we do that, I'd like to offer a moment for each one of us just to respond in our, in our own hearts to this question of what God's doing about barriers because those barriers have a landing place in us of... The landing place is that where we have fear or prejudice towards people that are different from us. Those are the landing, those are the foundations on which the, the unwanted barriers get built. So I want to invite you to take to just to... Uh, open your heart, as it were, for a moment, and to ask, is there any fear or prejudice towards people outside the church, towards people of a different ethnicity or a different culture or a different generation? Because these are the things that God wants to deal with. And we see him up and at it dealing with these things. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are at work, Creator God, and we pray that you would free us from fears and prejudices that divide, whether they divide us across geography or across ethnic difference or divide us from those whom you love outside of the church, whether there's even a division that just sort of sits right through the middle of us ourselves as the private part of us and the public part of us. Lord, all of these divisions, would you come and heal in our own hearts 
I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. Uh, Steve, you're going to join us? <laughs> Sorry, too many bits of paper. Brilliant. Uh, we're going to take a few moments now just to celebrate and honour and pray into all that God is doing in Lifehouse, in Bistro and Banbury, but also in the relationship between the two churches. And uh, as Steve has just said, a connection is, is a family connection. It's a, we sometimes use the phrase life joint. It's a joint across which life flows. It's, it's a joining of God. And uh, we've been working far more closely. Uh, and as Mark said earlier, we've been trying to help Lifehouse as they, as they restart post-pandemic. And as Steve has said already, and God has been speaking. This is not something we've conjured up. We've not kind of sidled up to people and said, how, hey, how about you moving? God has done it. God's got there even before we started. We, we set ourselves a time scale, and God has done it about 10 times quicker than we possibly imagined. So God's at work here. And one of those people he's been speaking to is Andy and Nicky Longmore. So if Andy and Nicky, if I could ask you to come and join us over there by the... Steve, do you want to come in the middle? Well, it forced me to me to say a few words about Andy and Nikki, which is a wonderful thing to do. I, I, um, I've made a note to make sure I don't forget one or two things I intended to say. When Bev and I, you'll remember, when Bev and I were, were uh, in our early married life, you were our small group leaders. Yeah, you, uh, well, it obviously passed you by, but it meant it, it landed for us. Uh, and... Um, and, and Andy and Nikki showed us how to act kindly towards people in the community around us. I remember first really clocking Andy in particular when we were meeting in the cinema and you had the regular habit of giving hot chocolate to all the taxi drivers uh, that queued outside. Goodness knows how much love was shared through all of that. But I also distinctly remember us being led by you um, to give out donuts at an event in South Park and being moved on by the authorities because we didn't have a license for doing so. So we learned some things together along the way. Um, but I'm just so grateful for the love that God has put in you that's overflowed and impacted Bev and I and impacted so many more. You are considerate and wise, determined to follow the Lord and are people that others can rely upon. And if anyone in Lifehouse where you're moving don't know these things already, I'm just giving you a heads up about the blessing that's coming your way. Uh, when the Lees Community Church began in 2002, uh, you served as key supporters for Rich and Kate, and I don't know how the church would have worked otherwise. <laughs> um, I was trying to work out when it was that the Lees Church was left without leaders and you offered yourselves. I think it was, I'm thinking 2014, but maybe it was 15. It was a while ago. Um, you offered to take on leading the church and have led with the same care and wisdom that we'd seen before. And you've led through some very testing times. And I know that those in the Lees will have thanked you profusely for, for all that you've done. I want to add my thanks. Um, this are a couple of exemplary character, just exemplary character. Uh, I commend them to Lifehouse wholeheartedly, as God has spoken, and you're off on a new adventure. There you are, diligently following the Lord. Um, I want to say thank you. That, I think, is for you. I, I shouldn't touch it, should I? But you can pick it up on your way, and I think we're going to pray. Yeah, we're going to uh, bring a few other people up and then pray all together. Could you just say, I mean, how is it that God called you to move on? Just a little uh, understanding of that would just be really helpful, insight into how God speaks. Uh, yeah, so uh, been on the leads a long time. There's some uh, wonderful people doing and seeing God do wonderful things. Uh, a while back, we, on Friday mornings, pastors in Oxford Church would get together with Mark and Kat and pray. And in those meetings, I'd... I just get that sense of, oh, do you know, <laughs> I wish, part of me wishes I could be in Lifehouse helping Mark and Kat, but I'm, I'm, I've, I've got a mission here on the Lees. And it was just a few months ago that we just kind of felt God saying, do you know what, it's, it's time for a new season. Uh, and God was speaking to us about uh, moving, talk to Andy and Ruth 
<laughs> and they were quite gobsmacked because obviously God had also been speaking. But this whole big conversation thing, we, we weren't involved in, but we did know uh, what God was speaking to us uh, about moving to Bista. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're on our way as soon as we can get our household. <laughs> Brilliant, fantastic. Well, if you'd uh, pick your gift up and then stand down the front here, so we're going to get a bunch of people pre- lined up along the front, and then we're going to pray all together. Fantastic. I was just thinking, actually, I think I, I knew you even before Steve, you had led Stephen Bev's house group. I remember coming to a house group in um, Nikki's parents' house when, bef- before the Leeds got started. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Steve said no reminiscing is allowed, so. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Chris and Stephanie, would you come and join us, please? Well, Chris and Stephanie, Stephanie's losing it. (laughs) Don't lose it because I'll lose it. (laughs) These are exciting moments, but they're also sad. Um, We are, that is the pain in the Oxford church is that we, we walk with one another. And then often God takes those that we are, we are very precious and takes them on to new adventures. And that has happened to Chris and Stephanie. And uh, I pres- is Chris going to do the talking? <laughs> yeah, maybe Andy might have How's to take God over soon. <laughs> How's God leading you guys? Um, well, so at the start of 2020, we were, we were just feeling a little bit unsettled, I think. Um, and then we got a card in the post from Ruth. Uh, and on the front of it, it said, look, I'm doing a new thing. <laughs> See, it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Um, so thank you, Ree, for bringing that again today. Um, that's been a real confirmation. Um, and yeah, God has just been speaking over and over again about this move and this process. And I, I mean, I thank him that he's been speaking so clearly because um, it is hard leaving you guys in OCC. Um, you've been my church family all my life, pretty much. Um, and yeah, this is... A significant moment but it is something that we are so excited about we are so excited to be joining in with Lifehouse and I think we've already over the past few months just seen a shifting in the atmosphere there so yeah we're we're on board and we live in Bista now Um, I don't know what to say I think I knew first my pastor said to me Oh, it's not prophetic or anything, but I think Lifehouse needs some help. (laughs) And I got in the car, my immediate thought was, no way I'm praying about that. So that was the giveaway. (laughs) Um, I eventually told my husband he got on board. Um, Yeah, it is exciting. That is the overarching emotion, um, despite my face. And I think the Lord has been so clear, and that has been a real blessing. And I was saying to Chris on the way here, my summary of this morning is that I don't feel ready, but I am willing. Brilliant. Uh, Yeah, if you could come down the front as well, lurk at a suitable distance, that'd be great. And uh, God has been active in someone else's life. Well, everyone's obviously, but Ori and Hannah, would you join us up here, please? We've got lots of newly married couples coming to coming your way. So all of you mature. <laughs> Chris and Steph are still in their first year of marriage, as are Ori and Hannah. Masks yeah, masks off when you're here. It's about the only plus of being able to go on the stage. <laughs> so God has been active in your lives. Uh, how many weeks married are we now? Nine. Eight, nine. <laughs> they already don't know. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Okay, well, we'll compromise. That's very good. Well done, guys. <laughs> so all in the run-up to the wedding, God was speaking. Uh, and tell us a little bit about what he did there and what you're excited about. Yeah. Um, I actually, before I start there, since I've got the mic and I can do whatever I want. Oh, dear. Turn him um, off. Turn him off. <laughs> just want to thank all the uh, youth parents for the incredible gift that you gave us to mark our wedding and our marriage. Um, 
and thanks to you guys, we now have a Hoover, <laughs> which is really exciting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, amazing, amazing gift. Thank you so much. We've not sent out cards yet, but we will. So, um, yeah, God, uh, obviously the amazing backdrop to the things that have been going on is our marriage. Um, we've been married for just over two months, and um, I guess... In the turbulence of that, we weren't really on board for switching plans. And I was working in Swindon, and we were planning to move to Swindon. Housing's cheap. Sounds like a no-brainer. But God had other plans. And um, really, it's been uh, changes in work, home, and church. So three of the really big things in life (laughs) all happening at the same time. And um, in essence, um, God really spoke to gave me an opportunity and I pushed on the door and Hannah and I prayed about it and um, and lots of other things tumbled through as well Um, all with God kind of pushing that mean that uh, we've ended up in Banbury and maybe you want to just talk a little bit about finding a home. Yeah one of the exciting things as well was once um, there was this new job Um, we didn't know, we were looking again for somewhere to live and we'd spent months and months trying to find somewhere to live and then um, there was a land, we looked at a flat and the landlady herself was um, doing all of the sorting of that and um, we ended up finding out we had a mutual friend or mutual acquaintance with her and it was just like God's favour in that and, um, and it sort of felt like home as soon as we stepped over the threshold and yeah so that's been that's wonderful so you are now firmly established in Banbury (laughs) very good very good (laughs) (laughs) you can drop down maybe come over here somewhere we've got a few more people to get up yet so um, isn't it really great we one of the um, the things uh, Steve mentioned that life has had asked for some input and help earlier in the year and we called it the big conversation you heard that phrase mentioned a little, little moment ago one of the outcomes of that was young people, younger leaders to move and mature pastoral gifting. And I think right here, we've got it, haven't we? Isn't that fantastic? God has fingered people and moved people on. It's just amazing what he's done, the way he's, he's heard our prayers there. Brilliant. And we're going to pray for these people who are feeling stirred to come. Uh, they are moving. They have moved, uh, most of them, uh, to play their part in the church in Bicester and Banbury. But there's others too. There's a, there's a new, we're calling it the Interim Leadership Forum. This is a a team of people that are feeling a stirring to be more involved in leadership in the church in uh, Life House. So I just want, want to ask the interim leadership forum also to come up and sort of linger along the front here in a suitably distanced kind of way. That would be great. And then we're going to pray for you all. So Jackie and the Sayers and the Ely's and the Houghtons who are hiding somewhere. Oh, brilliant. Do join us. Uh, there's a suitable, suitable distance. Get over there somewhere, yeah. There's a, brilliant. Um, we're going to pray, and we're going to pray that God... The picture, we, the picture I have as I think about this team, this t- amazing team, is like an incubator. It's a seedbed. There's stuff God's doing. There's new things God is doing in these people. There's others actually on the team. Clive and Carolyn aren't able to be here today. They're away, and Alex is not able to be here at the moment. There's a lot others on this team as well. It's a great team. I'm really excited, really in hope about the future of Bista and Banbury. And uh, we're going to pray and ask God what he wants to say prophetically. So, and I think Barry and Mary are going to join us to pray. Barry and Mary, do you want to come around to this mic here? That would be great. <laughs> the choreography of a stage these days is a little bit complicated, but yeah, we are. Just uh, brilliant. Um, so, uh, I'm going to pray, and then, and then Barry and Mary are going to sp- speak prophetically, and I think Ruth's got something prophetically as well. And if anyone else... Uh, with the prophetic gifting feels they've got something from the Lord for this moment. Do, do come around here and form a queue for the mi- microphone, we'll, um, and we'll see where we get to. Um, Father God, thank you for your provision. Thank you. Let's just, yeah, let's just reach our hands out and pray together. This is not just me praying, but us praying to commission this new team to this new season. Father God, thank you that you have spoken to people. Thank you that you have stirred people to, to uh, step up and play their part in leadership, whether they're moving, whether they're in situ already, whether they've been there for a long time, God, you're doing a new thing. And we perceive it, Lord, and we say thank you for what you're doing. 
Uh, let it come. Bring your anointing to these people in the different ways they serve and lead and function in that church. Lord, let each of them play to their gifting to play and their strengths to, to find the sweet spot for them that is where your anointing and grace comes and they find fruitfulness in that church. Amen. Amen. Uh, I... Hey, it's worth just saying, Barry, for those of you who don't know Barry and Mary, Barry and Mary are just a wonderful... We see them as like spiritual grandparents in the church. They, they planted the church in Bicester, which has since become a church in Bicester and Banbury. Love you guys, appreciate you guys. So, you know, appreciate the words you're going to bring to us. Yeah, um, I've been reading through Zechariah, and uh, at the beginning of the week, Zechariah 4, a passage we all know, but God just really laid it on my heart. So I've done a slight um, sort of update of it. This is what the Lord says to our leadership forum. It's not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain, will stand in your way. It will become a level plain. And uh, just two things. I'm not going to preach a sermon on that. There's so much you could take from it. But, um, you know, we're in a time of God's favour. Lifehouse, we are in a time when God is sending us good people, when he's changing the atmosphere, uh, when he's putting a new sense of hope in our hearts. God is changing the atmosphere. It's a time of his favour. And the encouragement is to us, now is the time for us to respond. Now is the time that he will increase us. Now is the time that he will grow us, mature us, move us on, that nothing, nothing at all will stand in our way that he can't overcome. Uh, and I suppose in a sense that's, that's nothing new, but it's just uh, my... What God has done in my heart is put what is hopefulness into a, a certainty. Because God plants faith in our hearts, doesn't he? I know we write, respond in faith, but there is a gift of faith. And that's what I want to pray for all of us guys, you guys, uh, if I may. So, Father, first and foremost, I want to pray for your power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to fall on each of these folks in fresh measure. Lord, you have been gracious through the years that I've walked with you and I've seen you pour out your Spirit. And I just cry out to you now, Lord, pour out your Spirit in new measure on each of these folks. May they know a fresh depth of anointing and fresh depth of courage. And Lord, I pray, and I speak a blessing over you, mm. of a new depth of faith, a new certainty in your hearts, mm. a new rising up in your guts that says, yes, this is the day of the Lord's favour. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has brought us to this point for. And I just speak a blessing of release of faith a release of encouragement, a release of strength, and a release into new and great things across the Cherwell Valley. Amen. 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 And Father God, we thank you so much that your call is on each one of these lives. It's on all of our lives, Lord. <clears throat> and we know that we can trust you totally the future <clears throat> and I remember someone saying to us when we first went to Bista if God's called you he'll equip you mm. so don't panic anyone because God's equipping is there for you each one and I just pray that on you now in Jesus name Amen 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 brilliant Simon Barry Mary if you want to just go this way, go this way yeah. <laughs> 
just felt God wanted to encourage us, encourage people in Lifehouse for the prayers that have been prayed over the years and even decades towards this time. And I felt God saying, you know what I've been doing as you've been praying? I've been mulching the soil in this place. I've been digging it in. I've been putting fresh fertilizer, fresh compost on this soil and getting it ready for these people to arrive, getting it ready for you, for new growth. And I feel like it's been an active work of God. And you may have felt like your prayers have just been against a glass ceiling. And he says, no, I have been mulching my soil and getting it ready. And I saw the mulch and it wasn't normal mulch, which just looks dark and brown, doesn't it? It had little specks of crystals in it. And I felt like God was saying, there's a number of things I'm putting into the mix in this church at this time that are like these crystals, like sharp crystals that sparkle in the light. And it's like there's a new fresh type of gifting coming to this church, new crystals that are within this mulch that you will see over time grow as they're taken up by the, by the plants and the, and the new people. And he just wants to encourage you to look out for particularly the new giftings that are coming in in different ways. And it's not necessarily new giftings just within the new people. God is going to bring new giftings out of people who are already part of this church. So he's just saying at this time, look for the, the sparkles in that, in that compost. Look for the new giftings that I'm bringing out and cultivate that. Brilliant. Thank you, Simon. Hannah? Interesting that we're talking about mulch. Um, the picture that I had when I was praying for you was of you as a community tending a large allotment garden. And um, you each had different things that you were doing. It was a very beautiful, calm, pastoral scene. Everything was growing beautifully. But when I look more closely at the plants, there were not tomatoes and aubergines, there were babies. And it was a sense that you are um, a community of gardening midwives. And midwives are an incredible bunch of people, aren't they? If you've ever had a baby, you know that they are cheerleaders. They are experts celebrating with couples when they have this new baby. But they're also very discerning when something's not right. They're experts at knowing what they're doing. Um, and they're a safe pair of hands. They're also um, grief counselors. They meet people. They're equipped to meet people where they're at in all of the different spectrums of life that can happen in that birthing room and just the sense that God was going to be growing in you this this teamwork and this sense of gardening and community together with him but also in a very um, broad spectrum of skills and not to be afraid of that this is not going to be um, this is going to be messy and um, but it's going to be like beautiful and difficult messy and he's with you in the room brilliant thank you uh, a couple more, and I think we're going to draw a line. Yeah, a couple more, and a couple more. I just, off. I just felt God say, I could see an engrafting branch of what's happening at the moment that's going to bring new, fresh life to the tree. But then I, I just saw, I heard the Lord saying really clearly in my mind, new birth, new birth, new birth, new birth. There's like a transfer that's going to cause life, but then it's new birth. It's, it's, it's exactly the same sound from the Spirit that Hannah was saying. I just want to echo yeah. it. No, I, I agree, Steve. There's, I've not seen God line people up so quickly for a move for quite a long time. And I think God's up to something. God's preparing for something, absolutely. And it's about new birth. Bev. Hi. Uh, my attention was drawn to the painting I did last week, which is just over there, for those that are in Lifehouse. Uh, about like a whirlpool, it's representing like a whirlpool, and you are drawn in to God's presence, but drawn into a deeper understanding of, of what Christ has done for you individually, and the sacrifice he has made for you, and the depth of relationship I believe God is going to put in your hearts, and you're going to go deeper into what he has done for you, and that that transform transformative relationship and he's drawn you together like a whirlpool he's drawn in different colors different people and pulled you in fast <laughs> like we've just said but now what he's going to do is he's switching that whirlpool into an almighty sprinkler <laughs> so where you where what happens where you've gone in He's going to sprinkle you out, and as that water, the life that he's put in you, 
from the depth of relationship you have with him, that blood, as we see in the picture, <laughs> a bit graphic, goes out with the water and goes out with the gifts and goes out with the seeds and you'll be planted in different places across the county where you're all in different places. And because of your relationship with Jesus, you will see uh, new life grow. You'll see those seedlings come up. You'll see harvests come because you've been planted far and wide into this community, but through the blood of Jesus Brilliant. and with the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. Amen. Thank you, Bev. <laughs> Ruth, do you want to go next? Um, yes, uh, Ori and Hannah, I was praying for you this morning, and I felt the word um, gather, 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 <laughs> and I felt God was saying he's going to gather, he's going to gather people to you, and I had a picture of uh, the, I don't know if you've ever played with one a little toy where there's um, uh, iron filings in a contained thing, and then you put a magnet underneath it, and you, you can move the magnet around, and it makes something beautiful, and uh, so I just felt like that you're the magnet. And God is going to gather people to you, young people, and he's going to create something beautiful. Amen. Um, Chris and Stephanie, <laughs> split across the stage here. Um, it's also for the Bister Church, really. Um, Stephanie, you, the word I had this morning was saying, you know what it's like to be an outsider. You know what it's like to turn up in a place we don't know anyone and to bed, bed, bed in and make yourself at home. And it's quite a hard work. <laughs> and uh, Chris and Steph have had words over their marriage about being bridges um, for people to bring groups together. And I feel there's a specific thing where Stephanie knows what it's like to be the outsider. And together, they will make that bridge for people to come in but it's also for you and the church in Bicester and Banbury that be receivers, be receivers of those that come across the bridge. They can't do it on their own. That's their role. They'll be the bridge. But you are the ones that receive. You're the ones that welcome in. You're the ones that help the people bed in and become part of the family. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, Chris, one last word, and then we're gonna, and Steve's going to pray. Um, oh, hello. Things on my face. Um, yeah, it's, it's so exciting to be part of this team. Um, and as I was dwelling on this sort of fresh team assembling um, in Bicester and Banbury, I felt God speak to me uh, about, well, through the Marvel films. Um, so for those of you who know the films, you'll know well that effectively the plot is that Iron Man is sort of going it on his own and fighting, fighting all the bad guys solo, effectively, for like two or three films. Um, and then gradually this team is assembled around him, uh, which gives its name to the film Avengers Assemble. Um, and it's this releasing of leadership within Iron Man and also a sense of being able to rely on the team that is around him. Um, and I just felt God say to you, Mark and Catherine, and especially to you, Mark, um, that we are here for you. Yeah. We, we're... We're in this, like we are moving intentionally to be part of your team and to support you and to lead within that. Um, you are not going it alone. You've been given support from God and support of us and we will do whatever we can to help you. So we stand with you, um, we, we assemble around you and we've got your back. Um, so this is for you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on, we need to see it. Don't we? actually needs to take it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Steve, do you want to pray? Yes. Uh, come, Holy Spirit. All our energy, all our love, all our faith, all that we have is gifted from heaven and comes by your power to us. We receive you, Holy Spirit. We pray for those stood at the front, for those also, part of Lifehouse Community Church who are here, those who can't be here today, and for those who are yet to join, Lord, we pray that as we read from Ephesians 2, that you would build them together into a house in which you are pleased to dwell. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to wait until the capstone is put on before you come. 
as their building, Lord, fill them, strengthen them, and we commission them in the mighty name of Jesus to go and to shine for you, to carry your presence wherever they go, and to be built together in Jesus' name. Amen. And I do want to just pray as well for everyone who's here this morning and those who are watching this online. Lord, those prayers are filling. Lord, we all need it. We all need it. Come to each one now. Every outstanding need, Lord, in this place this morning. (laughs) And anyone who watches later, Lord, any outstanding need, come now by the power of your Spirit and give the good gifts that are needed. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Take your seats. Uh, Iron Man, I think you need you up here. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, just to say to the church in Oxford too, this is not a somehow goodbye, we'll see you in 10 years' time, we'll see you at the odd wedding, as to use Steve's analogy. This is not a wedding-only relationship. This is a, we want this to be a more active relationship. There's going to be ongoing life and flow and connection between the two churches and looking forward to seeing what God does in the months to come. I think Mark's got something to share with us. Um, as I was praying for his meeting, I believe uh, God gave me this phrase that uh, you've released the few, but now I'm going to release the many. And uh, I don't believe this is just for Oxford, but this is for both churches. Um, He gave me three categories. Um, One was chains. The other one was sideline or benched. And the other one was on the pitch but moving position. And God wants to release the many. And uh, for some of us, we've got chains, chains of doubt, fear, unbelief. You don't think you can do it. And God wants to release you from those chains. I saw them physically falling off people. They were around your chest. They were linking your foot to your chair so you couldn't move. I saw them being broken and falling off people. There's people that either you've put yourself on the sideline or on the bench Or maybe you feel like others have benched you or sidelined you. God wants to say it's time to come on the pitch. It's time to play your part. But it's time to get with the vision of what he's already speaking of, not bring a new vision. There's moving into a position that's within the pitch, that's already going on. The play is in play, but are you going to get on and play your part? And for those on the pitch, God's saying, will you move? Not because you've done a bad job. Not because you're no good in that position anymore. But because as you move, it will release other places. It will release places for those people who are coming off the bench or those people that have had the chains broken. It will release a movement It will release the game going bigger and further, seeing God's kingdom go bigger and further. And for some people, that's within the church you belong. It might be just a repositioning. For some of you, it might be a physical house move. It might be to the Lees. You heard of what Andy and Nikki and others have been doing. It might be that God's calling you to move there. It might be Cheltenham. We're planting a church in Cheltenham. It might be that God's saying it's time to move there or to move to another part of Oxford City or another part of Bicester or Banbury or to move there. But there's, there's movement that God is asking for. And um, I'm going to do this anyway. We're running out of time. But I just feel like there's a response 
this morning. And if God's speaking to you about one of those three categories, I just want to ask you to stand and then we're going to pray into those. So if there's chains, if you feel like you've been sidelined, or if you're on the pitch but you feel like God's speaking about a new position, why don't you stand in response to that now? And we're going to pray. Those of us that are sat around these people, reach out an arm. We can all join in this prayer. God, you are doing a new thing. Today is a new thing. Lord, there's more to come. We believe it and we receive it. And we want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Would you release these chains? Would you break them? Would you tear them off? Would doubt be gone? Lord, would you release them to enter onto the pitch that you've got for them? To release them into the positions that you've got? Lord, and those on the bench, Lord, we want to just ask, would you pour out your love on them? Lord, those that feel like they've been sidelined, those that maybe have been sidelined by others, we want to pray, would you pour out their, your love on them and would you relieve them of that grief right now? Lord, would you take away those hurts and pains and I pray you'd give them the ability to catch the vision that's already been set. Not to start a new game, but to run with others, to run in team, to run in the game that you've called us to play. And Lord, for those that are called to move, Lord, we ask, would you reposition them? Would you dig up their roots and everything around them and would you put them into new pots in new places? Lord, we pray, would you call them to Cheltenham, to the Lees, to Lifehouse, to other parts of Oxford City. Lord, would you stir up a moving in us, Lord? Would we no longer be a comfy and cozy church, but would we be a church that moves in your spirit, that goes where you call us to go? Lord, that you are speaking of greater things to come. That this is a new day, a new day of new birth, a new day of seeing your kingdom come, of reaching out beyond the, the Cherwell Valley and Oxford and the Thames Valley. There's a going forward that you're calling us to. And Lord, we want to say, we want to play our part. We want to be on the pitch. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do be seated. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I, I love it when we start to hear the voice of God through the prophets. So there's been quite a lot shared this morning. We'd encourage you to go back and reflect on that and weigh and pr just pray it through. Uh, you can easily just check, go back to the live stream. Straight afterwards, you'll be able to go back and just play the, the various bits again. And we'll, we'll, it would encourage you to do that, so that we're taking the word of God seriously and weighing it as the scripture encourage us to. We're done. Uh, parents, you need to go and get your children right now, please. Uh, sorry we've overshot a little bit. Uh, parents, so parents go. Now, if you're on the live stream, thank you for joining us. Uh, have a great day. Uh, goodbye.